Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. On your feet, it is prayer time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the fruit of your lips, begin to tell him how wonderful he is. Hallelujah. He's a good, good God. And welcome to the launch. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is, and the table is spread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our reading, our scripture reading will be coming from Psalm 51, King James Version. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I've shapen, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out my, all my iniquities. Here it is, <laughs> create in me a clean heart. Say it with the fruit of your lips, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach, the, teach transgressors transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted 
unto thee. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank the Lord for this reading today. How many need a clean heart today? As the Lord has created you a clean heart today, hallelujah. With the fruit of your lips, begin to tell him how wonderful he is. With the fruit of your lips, begin to tell him how lovely he is. With the fruit of your lips, begin to tell him he's the only Savior that you serve. Come on and open your mouth right there, hallelujah. Father, we thank you today because you are God and you are God alone. Hallelujah, Father, there is none beside you, none other under you and none above you that's greater than you. You are the greatest. Greatest God in this nation. You are the greatest God in this world. You rule and you super rule this universe. There is nothing that gets beside you, behind you, or in front of you without you knowing. God, we thank you right now because you're God all by yourself. You created yourself. Hallelujah, God. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? God, we thank you. Hallelujah for creating in us. A clean heart a renewing a right spirit within us and father we thank you now hallelujah that our sins are forgiven hallelujah God we thank you even though we were born in sin and shaping in iniquity that you are forgiving God hallelujah thank you for your son Jesus who died on Calvary thank you for the blood never loses its power Thank you, hallelujah, that the world rocked and reeled like a drunken man when he died on Calvary. Thank you that the sun refused to shine because our great God died for us. But that's not the end. He rose again. And we thank you, hallelujah, that we serve a risen Savior. Yes, we do. And we thank you that when he returns, he shall be the Lion of Judah. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, because you're great and you're great to be praised. We thank you and you're great and you're great to be praised. Come on and make a shout in this place. Come on and lift up holy hands. Because we serve a God who is not dead. He is alive. Come on and open your mouth right there. We serve a God who is alive. He's not Buddha. We serve Jesus the Christ. And his name, his name, his name is great. And great it to be praised. Come on and call ya.
Take a neighbor by the hand just right quick. Pastor Lee, Pastor Charlie, y'all pull my coattail if I'm too long. But take a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost tonight. Somebody ought to be loud right now. Look at your other neighbor because that's the wrong neighbor. Look at your other neighbor. Say, other neighbor, I'm glad tonight I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, it makes me love my enemies. It makes me love my friends. It, it makes me do right when I want to do wrong. Somebody shout, the Holy Ghost. And on tonight, I come to have church. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but this is my third service for today. And I've, I've been needing to have church. Listen, you ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you only knew the hell that I've been through this week, you'd understand why I praise God like I praise God. Woo, okay. Do me a favor, clap your hands. Tashan, bump that for me. Everybody do me a favor. Everybody clap to me.
hands of the Holy Ghost. That's the wrong neighbor. Look somewhere else. Grab you a neighbor that ain't sitting next to you. Hurry up and go get somebody. Y'all not moving. Come on. Get you some. Damn, thank you. And say, neighbor, the only reason why I didn't lose my mind. Say, the only reason I didn't cuss them out. The only reason why I didn't have to take them out. It's because of one thing. Holy
So we family, you may not know my face, but I'm their brother. I'm her brother. Y'all better come on and have some little church with me. Now lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'm thankful tonight. Come on, tell your neighbor again, I'm thankful tonight. Song says this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For one more day, I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For one more day. Everybody say thank you, Lord.
We're gonna do this real quick.
if you're thankful, you ought to just say so. The redeemed of the Lord ought to open their mouths in this room and release a shout with a voice of triumph. If you're really grateful, if you're really thankful, if you know it was nobody but the Lord who carried you through. Luke chapter 17. Thank you, Elder Ronald Taylor, my brother, my family. Amen. Thank you for coming and allowing God to use you. Had a service yesterday and then three today. Amen. If you would have told me you were coming, you could have just preached after you finished singing. I got a plane to catch, Doc. You could have just preached. I mean, you was already there. If you would have took a text, I would have sat down. Amen. <laughs> I'm so serious. <laughs> Luke chapter 17. <laughs> Let us continue to be in prayer for one of our own. Um, Lisa. are not here today as they are still continuing serving their family um, as they have lost someone near and dear to them. <clears throat> Life was celebrated on yesterday, the Greater Good News Baptist Church, and she already told me with tears in her eyes on Friday that she was going to do her best to be here today. But I told her that that was not necessary unless the Lord gave her strength. So we are aware of her absence and Leslie's absence on today, but we're continuing to pray with them and for them. <clears throat> Luke 17, um, some of you already know where we're going. We introduced it last week and I uh, plan on saying what the Lord says today, begin at verse number 11, beginning um, verse number 11 down through 19, we're going to read from the New American Standard Bible, if you don't have that version at your possession or cannot access it quickly, please look at our presentation, Monitors James, amen. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him. They raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give God glory except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up 
and go. Your faith has made you well. So ends the reading of God's holy word. Find you somebody. Matter of fact, I already told y'all last week what to do. Find you a different three people and shout in their face, I'm different. I'm different. I'm different. You may be seated for the presence of the Lord. I'm different. Listen, before I begin, let me give a couple of instructions. If by chance I run out of time and I have to run out of here, I need you all to understand that when we finish with the message and after offering has taken place, that we're going to pray over our students and our educators today. So these are my instructions that instead of doing our general prayer circles, that we would create prayer circles that have children in the midst of them circle around them and I need somebody from the prayer team and you can give those assignments to be praying for the children and the educators that are a part of those prayer circles amen amen and uh, we're believing God to be faithful and fruitful in their lives as they some have already began their school year Others are about to begin their first day. But we are believing God to be who God is with them and for them. If you agree, shout yes. yes. Hallelujah. I'm different. Mm-hmm. Is that anybody been leaning on that all week long? I'm different. Listen, uh, Martin Luther King said the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. How do you respond to the periodic and pressure challenges to conform and to fit in? Not only by the world, but by those who you are connected to. Does separation anxiety due to distance and difference shape how you make decisions? Are you making decisions from a fear place or a faithful place? Do we hold true to find our identity nestled in the words of Paul from Romans 12 and 2? Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where the, where the apostle challenges us to allow the reality of our response and our reaction to be defined by the renewing of our minds because the power of different is not just a gift, it is an anointed command. I need you to say that out of your mouth. The power of different isn't just a gift. It is an anointed command. Becoming or being different isn't about being difficult. It is about being distinctive. Becoming bold enough to walk unapologetically in your God-granted identity all the while misunderstood, misinterpreted, and just flat missing out. Is there any different folk in the house today? who understand that because you're different, you have been misunderstood, you have been misinterpreted, you have just had to flat miss out because you had to make some different decisions. It's my desire today that for us to become so stirred by this word that that the generational epidemic of FOMO, fear of missing out, will become a new FOMO, favored one moving obediently. Some of us have made decisions out of fear of missing out. But how about we make our decisions based on the fact that we are favored ones who move obediently. 
That's what makes me different. Here in the text, we meet 10 men who are only identified by disease and background ties. But only one of them who still remains nameless receives a designated distinction because he decided to be different. Was known by the community that he walked with, that he grew with, that he did life with. But he outgrew and lived on another level because of a single decision. Matter of fact, I dare to tell you today that that one decision, Cat, changed his entire life. It changed the trajectory of his path. It did not change his purpose, but it certainly changed the plans that he had. When you are willing to be different and make a different type of obedient decision, it will shift the trajectory of your life. It will change the course that you travel. It will make you move different and it will move some people around you. Matter of fact, if you're looking to move some people around you out of your life into a different place in a different position, I double dog dare you just make a different decision. We serve a God who does not create duplicates, only originals. Psalms 139, I believe, tells us that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am not a duplicate. I am an original. Lay your hands on yourself and shout that. I'm not a duplicate. I am an original. God only creates originals and not duplicates. And this is why in the text we see someone who has the same problems as others, but he's a different person. And you have to understand that because we live in a time where we can experience the same problem, it doesn't mean we have to be the same people. Same problems, different people. And that's what I want to deal with today concerning us, that we become a people who say we might have similar problems, but we're not going to be the same people. Think about it. There is nobody in life like you. There's never been anyone like you before, and there never will be anyone like you again. No, no, you have a specific role to play in God's kingdom, and a role that no one else can fill, and that's why it is so crucial that you embrace your uniqueness. Don't try to be someone else when God called you to only be you. These men who are called lepers are men who have been bonding and bound because they had the same condition. Have you ever heard of trauma bonding? Yeah, these men did life together because they were bound by their condition. Who are you bound or bonded to in life because of similar conditions, because of similar or same complaints, because of similar or same conditions or controversies or conspiracy? Who, how does your friend circle look? Is it measured? Because we are bound by the same condition we we bonded because we had the same type of complaints or are we together because we serve the same Christ I knew it'd be quiet right along this part because we don't want to really analyze or internalize the fact that many of our relationships that we build in life normally come together not because we want to be better but because we become better being bitter together think about your conversations think about who people what people call you and text you about do y'all ever have anything else to talk about if there's no mess involved can you hold a longer conversation if drama is not involved? Can you not hang out unless gossip is involved? We have some separated group of individuals who are only together and secure because their condition is the same. 
But even though we got the same problem, we have to become different people. We have to be different. We can't be the same. We live in a world that has similar problems, and I could name a few of them, but I'm sure you can think of some on your own. But I dare you to declare I'm going to be different because I don't want to be like these lepers who are only bound together, who are only bonding together because they're sick together. Mm-hmm. I wish I had time today to talk about the people who have the same sin and the same sickness who click up together because no one is going to challenge you within that circle of sameness. If you're the only healed person in your group, something is wrong. Matter of fact, you're probably not. All of you think you're healed and everybody's still sick. If you're the only happy person in the group, something is wrong. You're probably lying to yourself. You're really not happy. All of y'all are sad, but you don't want to be the saddest one of the bunch. And so we have to be careful not to let similar problems make us the same people because we have the right to be separated from sameness because we are different. These lepers realize that their only hope for healing is Jesus. And he needed to have mercy on them, not because they were worthy, no, but just because they had a desire. Their condition was obvious. What they wanted Jesus to do for them, namely, was to take away leprosy. Listen, this is a challenge here because really all they wanted was for Jesus to take away leprosy. Why? Because leprosy caused them to be separated. When you read the text, they had to shout out to Jesus because they couldn't get close enough to him for him to touch them. The law forbid them from being in. They had a social distancing And they could not get close enough so they have to cry out to Jesus and they think that if Jesus could heal them of their sickness, maybe they can get close to people again. Oh, y'all missed it. You missed it. That the truth is some of you really only want to be healed because you're trying to figure out a way to get close to people again. You, you, You only want it to change because you want to get close to people again. You don't like being segregated or separated. And so my decision making is inconclusive when wondering how I'm going to move because in most cases I just want to be close to people even if it takes me away from his plan. Mm, The lepers, they can't get close to him. So they've got to shout out to have mercy on us they scream they ask for mercy they have a condition that only Jesus can heal but they don't have a countenance that shows Jesus that they desire more how many of you come because you just need something Versus coming because you want everything. That's what makes us different. When you decide I'm not coming just for something. I'm coming for everything. What did I say? I said same problem. Different people. But what about same plan, different praise? Y'all read the text. They call out to them. Have mercy on us. That's a form of worship because they called his name. They they worshiped him from a distance. They asked to be healed. And then Jesus responds with the command versus with contact. Pastor D, this is the part that I got hung up on because these men received healing 
from a command and not from contact. Jesus talks to them and does not touch them. He, he talks to them. He does not touch them. And some of us get upset because we didn't get touched. But Jesus is still talking. There's enough power in his talk to heal ten lepers. But you get upset because you didn't get one touch from a man of God. I got a question for you. Do you have needy faith or do you have now faith? Do you have needy faith or do you have now faith? It takes faith to cry out for help, but it also takes just that much more faith to be obedient, to walk away with just a word. Kiana, how many times have you asked for help from somebody and they said, I got you, and you had to walk away believing that they had you, hoping that they was going to come through. And this is the difference between people and Jesus. When Jesus gives a word of approval, a word of healing, a word of release, you can have now faith versus needy faith. Some people have needy faith. They need Jesus to touch them. They need somebody to say something to them at church. They need something at the altar. They need somebody to lay them out so they can roll on the floor and have a prayer blanket laid on top of them. But how about those who live in obedience who will say, I don't have needy faith. I've got now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He said, go show yourself to the priests. Now faith says, I'm already healed as I'm going. Needy faith says, wait, where's my certificate of healing? Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Because disruptive decisions say, I don't need affirmation today. All I need is an anointed command that says I have what I ask for. And because I have what I ask for, I can go my way. As they went. That's what the text says. It's right there, y'all. I ain't preaching nothing that you can't read. Just read it. He said, go show yourself to the priest. I want you to imagine that every step they took was another portion of healing happening. And the closer they got to the priest, the more healed they became. They may not have felt strong at the sound of his word, but as they went in obedience, they became stronger every step they took. What makes you different is that you can find strength in your going versus strength in your getting. Preach, Lee Williams. Here it is. Here it is, Jazz. Go show yourself to the priest. Why the priest? The priest wasn't a doctor. The priest wasn't a therapist. The priest didn't have no healing power. They, the priest wasn't no more powerful than Jesus. Francisco, the priests were the only ones who could do purity inspections. When you had leprosy, it was, whew, it was the priest that could only declare you fit to get back in society and be normal again. It, it's, it's the thing of sin kept us separated. But when he came in contact with the priest, sin didn't separate me anymore. It let me be a part of society. I'm different, y'all. Because I didn't need the priest to give me a report, but it was a part of the law. So Jesus says, even though you came in contact with me, fulfill the law of the land to get all that you really need. Here's, 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 here's what would have happened. Here's what would have happened. Here's what would have happened, Ashley. They could have been told, go show yourself to the priests. They could have believed that they were healed. They could have went their way and tried to go do life in society regular and normal. And people still would have been like social distancing back up, stay away 
You're a leper. I don't have any. You see my skin? I'm good. You see me? I'm good. I'm, I'm a lot stronger. I'm, I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. No, you didn't follow the procedure, the process, and the plan because you did not get clarity from the priest. The priestly report would have said that you are healed and that your life is equal to us so that you can be amongst us. And so you still are marked unclean because you haven't gone to see the priest. Now, this is not for us to go to confessional booths because seven Hail Marys ain't going to fix you. But uh, what we do see here is that we ought to appreciate that sometimes you've got to come before some authority who can declare new life upon you. Can you have new life on your own? Yes, you can. But how about I have new life that's been appointed to me because I've been affirmed. Jesus is now giving instructions and watching them walk away in obedience. You do realize that faith and obedience are one. We cannot have faith and be disobedient. Obedience is what shows the true measure of our faith. And some of us are acting faith-filled when we're really just functional. Because only one of them used faith-filled obedience. The other nine used functional obedience. Go show yourself to the priest. Functional obedience says I can do some things, but faith-filled obedience says I'm going to do all things. All were separated from Jesus, but aware of Jesus. They all had the same plan, but only one of them had a different praise. Only one was called a stranger. A foreigner, yes, a man from another tribe. That's what that verse says when it says one came back to give him glory, and he was a foreigner. He came back for a different reason. Do you know what's really wrong here, you all? Nine came and got what they wanted. Only one went back for what he needed. When Jesus raises the question, weren't there 10 of you? Were not 10 healed? Where are the nine? Nine came for what they wanted. Only one returned for what he needed. Mm-hmm. That's what's wrong. Today, we've got many that come to get what they wanted. But how many remained for what they needed? Where are the nine? You can look around this room and imagine from your photographic memory individuals who have come and gone. Some came and got what they wanted. But how many stayed for what they needed? You can look at your life. How many people have been connected, disconnected, reconnected, amputated, excommunicated? Nine come and get what they want. But how many stay for what they really need? You know what I have a problem with? They wanted a blessing, but not the becoming. That's really what it boils down to. Individuals that just want a blessing but don't want the becoming. They want the victory. They don't want the fight. They want the healing but they don't want to suffer and struggle. They want financial breakthrough but they don't want discipline. They want a new body but they don't want to work out. They want a husband but they don't want to date and wait. 
ah, they want a new mind, but they keep watching the same old trashy stuff. Uh, they want a new tongue, but they won't stop hanging with folk who cuss every other day, every other minute, every other second. If you want difference, you got to be different. Because there are too many individuals who come for the blessing and not the becoming. People are filling up houses all over the world because they want the blessing and not the becoming. They want to be titled, but they don't want to be tested. They want to be affirmed, but they don't want to be afflicted. What's wrong with us? You are missing some individuals in your life, and I can hear you asking, where are the nine? I'm not concerned about the nine. I'm looking for the one who came back, not just for the blessing, but so that he could become. It's right there in the text. Javante, it's right there in the text. He comes back and glorifies God. And because he does that, Jesus says to him, your faith has now made you whole. Not only did you get healed from leprosy, but now you are saved from society and the penalty of sin. He was not just obedient, Tina. He was grateful. And gratitude is a part of faith. Can you be thankful even when it seems like the report is not changing? Can you still be thankful before they say you're completely healed? Can you be thankful before they say you've been approved? Can you be thankful before you get what you want? Can you have faith-filled obedience Versus functional obedience. This type of praise does not come because of music. This type of praise does not come because of their favorite worship leader. This type of praise does not come because of their favorite song. This type of praise does not come because you've got a prophetic word that you were about to get something that you thought was impossible. No, this type of praise says, I've got the same plan as others to go show myself to the priest. But before I worry about people, let me first thank God. Before I put myself in front of individuals, let me first praise him. Because here's the truth, in the sin of ingratitude and disobedience is universal. Being ungrateful and disobedient. What makes you different? What makes you different if you are ungrateful? What makes you different if you are disobedient? In this world, we have a universal problem of individuals who are ungrateful and disobedient. And this is why we need praise leaders. Because we're ungrateful. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. There's no silence there. You may have cried in secret, but there's no such thing as crying in silence. Crying has a sound. And it says my soul cries out because I think about what I ought to be thankful for. Listen, if God has been good to you, you ought to show some signs. And you shouldn't wait till it's already all right. You ought to take the command even when you can't get the touch. You ought to get the command even when you can't get the contact. Uh, 
I heard the woman with the issue of blood say to herself, if I could just get to the hem of his garment, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I would be made whole. I hear the three Hebrew boys saying that uh, even if he doesn't do it this time, we are sure that our God is able. I need some folk in here who will say I can be grateful even while I'm still groaning and grieving. No, y'all playing too much. Because the truth is your body ain't healed yet, but you still ought to praise him like it already is. The truth is you're still broke, but the truth is you ought to praise him like you've got six figures in the bank account. The truth is you're lonely, but your praise truth ought to be I'm going to praise him like I've got a fairy tale ending. The truth is you've been lied on, talked about, mistreated, misunderstood, backstabbed. You've been left for dead, but your praise ought to say I'm a living testimony I should have been dead and gone but the Lord let me live on and I thank God that I'm still alive are you different are you so different that you come to give him a praise no matter what those type of people believe the song enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. Be thankful, you read it, unto him and bless his name. For the Lord, <laughs> he's good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure through all generations. The camera ain't going to catch this and the live stream broke a long time ago. But for the rest of y'all in here, here it is. Kiana, go outside them double doors. Y'all turn around and look at, Ke at Kiana. Because that's one person I know don't need nothing. She just need to think. I want you to show the rest of the house how you ought to enter 329 East Ramsey room when you come in on Sunday. Yeah, take, an yeah, take another lap for Vita while you're at it. Because the truth of the matter is if you're different, then you don't need to wait for the praise moment to start. You ought to come in and create one yourself. I'm getting tired of coming in here in my office on Sundays listening to y'all tickle and cackle, gossip and talk, chitty and chatty when you ought to be coming through the room already. I'm different, I'm different, I'm different. And if you're different like this man who says I'm not part of the nine, I dare you to take a moment right there and say I received the command from the Lord that says I'm about to change, that it's about to turn around, that things are about to get better, and I believe it, so I'm going to glorify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Is there anybody here who's been redeemed? Bought with a price. Jesus has changed your whole life. I wasn't going to do that. But if anybody asks you just who I am, you ought to tell them that I am redeemed. <laughs> Is that anybody's testimony in here <laughs> that there may be people <laughs> who are not grateful but my faith says thank you to the Lord who makes the difference in my life is there anybody here who will shout right there I'm a disruptive declarer I'm not gonna wait till the battle is over I'm I'm gonna shout, shout right now. Y'all sitting here looking at me, but I dare you to make that your truth, that you're not gonna wait for your healing. You're not gonna wait for your deliverance. 
You're not gonna wait for that bill to get paid. You're not gonna wait for the financing to go through. You're not gonna wait for the nine to figure it out. A matter of fact, help me close and find you a neighbor and say neighbor don't you wait for the nine to figure it out do what you do and declare he is good find somebody else and tell them don't look for the nine just be the one don't look for the nine just be the one don't look for the sick just be the one don't look for the broke just be the one don't look for the crazy just be the one don't look for the hoe just be the one don't look for the pimp just be the one don't look for the liar just be the one don't look for the drug dealer just be the one don't look for the deadbeat just be the one don't look for him don't look for him tell your neighbor stop looking around and just look up i will good god almighty lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help oh my help come from the lord who made heaven and the earth he shall not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee doesn't slumber or sleep the lord is a keeper he's the shade upon thy right hand and the moon by night he restores he restores my soul and because he is a keeper i'm gonna declare that he is good lift up your hands all ye people and shout with a voice of triumph god 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 he's about to respond to your praise and his response is your faith has made you whole take somebody by the hand come on and grab your neighbor's hand shake them and rock them rock them and shake them shake them and rock them rock them and shake them and say neighbor your faith has made you whole now praise him like it's already done while you're sitting here like god can't come through i need about seven praisers who will lose their mind and say thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord if i had ten thousand tongues i couldn't thank you enough but with the one i got thank you lord you're saving my family thank you lord they may not be in church yet but thank you anyhow you're saving my mind i still got dark thoughts but thank you anyhow my body is racking with pain but thank you anyhow i'm taking medicine every day but thank you anyhow they left me hung and dry but thank you anyhow is there anybody here who will shout thank you anyhow open your mouth and shout thank you Thank you anyhow, thank you anyhow, can I leave you with one more verse?
Jesus weeping may endure for a night but grab your neighbor's hand and say child child Joy's coming in the morning. So don't wait till the sun comes up. Put your hands together and open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and praise from a different space. Praise from a different declaration. Open your mouth and let the glory the Lord project out of your mouth throw your voice like an arrow and shout thank you shout glory glory hallelujah glory hallelujah since I laid my burdens down feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down, and I got one more declaration, will you help me close, take your prophetic finger, point it across the room, and tell somebody, can't nobody do you like Jesus, ah! holler at him.
Come on, shout, I'm different. I'm different. And God made me that way. Come 
Lord, you see. You touch the altar, hallelujah. Father God in heaven, we just come before you right now, God, to give you all the honor, give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise, Lord God. Right now, God, as we lift up our children to you, Father God, and our educators, Father God, we lift them up to you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the purpose that you have for their life, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the vision that you have set for them, Father God. We thank you right now, God. We thank you, Lord God, that they are different, Father God. They are set apart, Father God. They are not like the normal, Father God. But, Father God, we thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you that they are chosen, Father God. 
And God, we declare right now, God, that as they begin this school year, Father God, that they will be their best selves, Father God. We thank you for it right now, Father God. We thank you, God, that no weapon that is formed against them, Lord God, will be able to prosper, Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, that they will walk into this school year, Father God, knowing, Father God, and believing, Father God, that they are the head, Father God, and not the tail, Father. They are above only, Lord God, and not beneath, Father God. They are blessed, Father God, everywhere that they go. And we thank you for it right now, God. We declare right now, Father God. We come against every trick of the enemy, Father God. We bind up anxiety right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We bind up peer pressure right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We declare right now, Father God, that the enemy cannot have these children, Father God. We declare right now, God, that they are yours, Father God. They belong to you, Father God. And God, we pray right now, Father God. That whenever their minds begin to wonder, Father God, that you would help them to remember who they are, Father God, who they belong to, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We declare it right now, Father God. We cover the parents right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Give them the strength to lead these children, Father God, to greater things, Father God. We cover our teachers right now, Father God, the teacher's assistants, Father God. Whatever it is that they're doing, Father God, anybody that comes in contact with these children, Father God, we declare right now, Father God, that, they will, that their will will line up with your will for their lives, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against every sickness right now, Father every sickness father god we come against it we bind it up right now father god we cover these babies father god from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet father god we cover them with the blood of jesus and god we say cover them right now father god let no hurt harm or danger come their way father god i declare father god that their schools are blessed father god simply because they're in the building god simply because they're present, Father God. And so no harm can come their way, God. And we thank you for it right now, Father God. God, we say be a fence around these children, Father God. Be a fence around these families, Father God. In your name, God, we declare greatness. We declare honor, Father God. And we declare love right now, Father God. And it is so, Father God. It is so, Father God. It is so, Father God. Wherever their feet will tread, Father God. Let there be love, Father God. In your darling son Jesus' name, we pray all these blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. It is so. Father.